All right, just about to assemble the um, cup lockers. Um, this is the redesigned version, so there's a lot more travel. As you can see, there's quite a bit here. I'm going to assemble it without the silicone just to show. So the first part you want to do is get your springs. Now, I bought this spring kit. Normally, we've been using pen springs, uh, but I got this spring kit. And right here, you can see this top one here. That's the one that I'm using. Um, it's 732s by one and a half. Uh, one and a half long, so 732s is the round. It's kind of a looser coil. Um, I couldn't find a metric one, so I just ordered these off of Amazon. They're kind of like a pen spring, which is what we normally use. Um, but since most people actually wanted to have an actual spring, um, so as you can see here, here's the three parts. I already pre-cut one because uh, I wanted to test. So to cut it, what I did is I take the spring, I put it in the recess, and then I cut it at about the height of, of, of the top here so that we can get some compression in on it. Um, obviously the stiffer your spring, the less compression you're going to want because this is what pushes on the tool and you don't want it to push too hard. Um, so basically I just take a pair of side cutters, I grab the spring at the spot, and then I clip it. Um, and that's how I end up with this. I'm gonna use the pre-coiled ends and toss the center. Um, it just, it'll dig less into the, and I'll, I'll face that down. Uh, what I wanted to show you here is I have two different cups um, and two different size springs. So depending on your setup, you can change the travel height based on that so on this first one, this is an M3 by 20. Uh, one of the things you wanna make sure is make sure that your screw fits in the hole and slides properly. There should be no resistance because that's what the cup is gonna do. So you pop that in, you put the cup on top. Um, sorry, I also forgot to mention that I've already pre-done the heat sets which go in from the bottom. You can see now they no longer go through the top I have a small little hole in there and that's just gonna be to help um, cure the silicone when the time comes. Um, and I'm gonna get through that in this video as well uh, a little bit later on. So you just put the cup in and you screw it down. Um, in this one, so again, this is the 20. So I'm gonna screw it down right till it hits, till the bottom's out. And that's about how much height you get, you can see it moves. So when your hot end comes in, it's going to hit this little 45 and push it down and block it. This is an M3 by 16. You should be able to go all the way down to 12. Um, and I think you could probably get away with a 25. Um, I'm gonna use the same spring. Uh, these are low tension springs, so it doesn't really matter. Again, just gonna bottom it out. Now you can see the difference between the 16 and the 20. Um, and again, it's the same style. You can see the screw kind of pop out. Obviously on the 20, you're gonna have more popping out. And that's basically how they assemble. Um, normally you would have the silicone in first. I wanted to go through this first because once I do the silicone, you need at least 24 hours for it to cure and I didn't want to be sticking my fingers in it. Um, so I'm going to take a quick little break here to set up for the silicone. Um, most of the time we've been using red RTV silicone, which is good to 350 Celsius. Uh, I'm going to try my hand at this copper, which is good to 371 Celsius. And it'll give it a new color. Um, I don't think it's required. I think the red is more than uh, sufficient. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to have copper cups in one of my printers uh, since I've been making so many of these. Um, so I'll be back and I'll show you. Uh, I bought these little tools from Amazon. They were six bucks, they're for doing silicone. Um, they come in a variety of different styles. And basically that's what I'm gonna be using. So you, I'm gonna insert the screw to block the hole to start with. I'm gonna fill the cup with silicone. And then I'm just going to run this across and then down and then I'm gonna swipe this way just to clean it off. The excess silicone should be on here. This should be nice and level, at which point I'm going to then just remove the screw and let it sit and cure. Uh, but I will do that 
in just a second. All right, we're back. So I got myself a little bit of water here. Um, silicone is uh, hydrophobic. So as long as you keep your hands wet at all times, uh, it won't stick to you. Uh, soapy water, a little bit of soap in it will even be better. I'm just using regular water. I also like these blue shop towels. They're nice and thick, so they're, they're really nice for uh, clean, cleaning up your hands afterwards or the tools, whatever you need. Um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is cut your nozzle. Um, you're going to want a pretty precise hole, so you want it to be pretty small. I'm going to just go to the first hole here. Um, you don't have to worry about a 45, like um, like you're doing caulking by any means, because you're filling a cup, you're filling a hole, right? Um, the second part is you need to open your RTV tube. Um, there's just a little pokey thing in the cap. You put it in backwards, you push it through, and boom, you're open. Um, Pop on the cap here. Um, so now what we need to do is grab the screw, like I had mentioned earlier. And we're gonna thread the screw in so that it blocks the hole. We don't want any of the silicone to get into the threads, um, which is why we do this. I mean, it's not the end of the world, it's just silicone. It would come out pretty easy, but we're just going to do this anyways. All right, so now I have it. It's, it's also nice to hold. I could hold the screw right so now we're gonna grab the RTV silicone here and I'm just gonna fill the nozzle up and we're just gonna start by filling in the void areas to make sure that we get a nice good coat inside um, this model has 45s on the side so the silicone should grip in here pretty good. As you can see I'm just kind of filling the cup up. Okay, it's a little bit much, but it's good for this demo. So now we're gonna take this little spatula piece and we're just gonna smooth it out. Looks like I actually had too, or not enough. So we'll just keep working it in. It's kind of like mudding a wall. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra in here because I actually don't have enough. Just a little bit deceiving. The good part about it is, is there's a lot of work time on this. Basically, you just keep working it until you get a nice smooth surface. This is my first time using these tools, by the way, so it may be a little bit, take me a little bit here. I think maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a new one and I'm going to wet the edge a bit because that'll help keep it from sticking because it is actually sticking a bit. Also my first time using this copper stuff so it's coming along maybe the key would have been to let it dry a little bit first maybe See there, that's not too bad. Uh, I'm just gonna clean up the sides. Don't have to, that's just me being picky. I want it to look good. There we go, that 
that's not too bad. And then what I'm gonna do is just remove this screw now. And we'll just set that aside and let that dry. And then we'll do the second one. Maybe this time I'll let it uh, cure up a little bit in here before I decide to try to smooth it. Actually, honestly, I think I probably did better with my fingers than I did with the little, I think the spatula tool might be a good finisher. You can see I'm just dipping, making sure I get a lot of water on my fingers and then just kind of patting it. That's how I did my last ones and it seemed to come out well. Always going back for more water, make sure. Good. So just pat this off. There we go. You can see that was a lot quicker. So these tools might not be the way to go. I think my finger was probably better. Just make sure to keep it wet. Undoing the screw. And I'll set that aside to dry. So there we go. So that's how those are assembled. Once they're done, I can put them back together like I did in the first video or first part of the video. All right. Hopefully that helps solve a few questions and show you how it assembles, how the parts go and how to measure the spring.